And so you might be saying, well, Jordan, well, what do I do? It's not me that slanders, ever, ever. It's not me that slanders. Remember talking about pride? It's not me that slanders. I'm always just around people that slander, you know? Well, what do I do when I get caught in a conversation that's filled with gossip or, 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 or down, you know? It's all down, speaking down, you know? W- what do I do then, you know? And, 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 and because you always hear conversations, slanders conversations, they sound like this, did you hear? Or they sound like this, can you believe? You know, you know what real slander sounds like? Uh, I would never. Really? You would never? I would never call him and say that. You don't know. You weren't in that situation. You might have done way worse. I know you. I would never. That's self-righteousness in a theoretical situation that can never be proved out. It's a pointless conversation. I would never. That's when you know you're caught in a slanderous conversation. And here's what I would propose that you say when you're caught in that situation. You ready? Here's what I would propose. You say this. I don't know. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't know. I don't know. And then, and then how about this? Find another side to the story. You say, when you say something, something, something like, can you believe her daughter did this when she went off to college? Say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't have all the data. I'm just hearing it right now. But I can tell you when I went off to college, it was difficult. I ate ramen noodles for three straight months. I called my mom crying. I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. Can you believe they're getting a divorce? I don't know about that. You know what? I, I hope I hope that God comes in in the final, in the final hours and he, and he does something. Because let me tell you, I, I've been married for, for eight years and it's been really tough sometimes. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope maybe they get counseling or something. All of a sudden, when you show the other side, you take the juiciness out of the conversation. You know, I, I, that's who I want to be. I, I, I was thinking of it this way. Pop the balloon and ruin the party. Just pop the balloon. You know, because, because, look, there's two sides to every story, and both of them are probably wrong. Pop the balloon and, and ruin the party. I'm not saying to be disagreeable, but I'm just saying you don't always have to agree. And, and, and one better, I think that you can say something nice about the person. So show another side to the situation. When someone says, can you believe? Or, or, or maybe, all right, I'll just use my personal, uh, my personal self here. Uh, I used to be... Uh, uh, kind of judgmental of parents, you know, with kids that would throw fits in, in like the store and stuff like that. I'd be like, get it together, you know, like teach your kids something, you know, and uh, or like when I was in the airplane, you know, I'd be sitting there and you see that parent walk down with a baby and your eyes are like, oh, no, that's when I, I don't pray during the turbulence. I pray when the baby starts walking. God, you know, that, that was me. And, and I had all these opinions on how to raise kids. It's so easy. You just do this. You just do that. Because I, I don't know. I helped my wife babysit a kid once, you know. <laughs> what, are you, what are you kidding? Listen, when I became a parent, when I became a parent, everything changed. I got so much grace. I walked by that lady in Target with her kid flipping out. And now I just give her the old parent nod. <laughs> you know, I see that dad, that kid's flipping. I just give him the old parent salute. Good luck praying for you. You know, now I'm the one. I'm the one in the airplane walking down with a baby and I'm looking at everybody's eyes and their eyes are big as saucers. I get some sick pleasure out of it. That's right. It's going to be a bumpy one. He, he slept on the way over here too. He already took his nap. It's going to get loud. I don't want to have an opinion about how to raise everybody's kids. You know, they say, like, uh, there's no bad kids, there's only bad parents. I don't know. Maybe there's some bad kids. <laughs> he seems like he's a great guy. I don't know what happened. I want to give the benefit of the doubt. I want to speak life. I want to speak life over that kid. Don't worry, they'll get saved. It's just going to be seven years, you know? I want to be life-giving in my speech. I want to be life-giving in my approach. I don't want to always know what's wrong with everybody. Let me tell you, I don't want that pressure. This is what James says. He says, why are you the judge? Why are you taking that that on yourself? Who are you to judge your neighbor? And and I think that our culture has supercharged this problem. And I got to say it, because of social media. Think about this. In the past, when you would judge your neighbor, they were actually physically your neighbor. You know, keeping up with the Joneses, the Joneses actually lived on your block. Now your neighbor lives in Seattle, lives in Houston, 
lives all over the world and you know everything about your neighbor. And, and here's the difficult thing that I think society has done, whether on purpose or not, I don't know, but it's actually created a, con a construct for you to be the judge. You can like something or not. You can thumbs up the video or thumbs down the video. You can comment on everything and you've got all the data and all the stories of what everybody's putting up about their life and you're doing the same. And so we're all judges judging each other about how they're raising their kid or how they're saying this or what they're doing with their dog or what, what kind of meal they made or what. And we just keep slamming the gavel down on everybody's political opinion. You're horrible for this. And, and, and we're all judging each other. No wonder we're all filled with anxiety. Everything we put up is getting judged. You put up a post to your kid and you say, I hope there's nothing horrible to be said about that. You know, you wear a pair of sneakers and you just say, I hope nobody's really mad about how much these cost. They were on sale and everybody's the judge and everybody's slamming down the gavel. Can I just say this? It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. I don't think I was designed to know everything about you and tell you where you're wrong all the time to the nanosecond on every social media account about every aspect of your life. I, I'm out. I'm out. And I think wisdom chooses to be out. I'm for you, not against you. Jesus is for me. He's not against me. I love you. I'm with you. I don't fully know everything about your situation or your life, so I choose to actively not have an opinion about it. You know why? I want to set you free from being indebted to me, and I don't want to be the judge, jury, and executioner of you. I want Jesus to be the judge. He's the one whose approval you need. He's the one that you want to like your life. He's the one that you want to put thumbs up or thumbs down on your life. Everyone else, it's just social pressure. I want Jesus to approve of me. And here's the beauty, Jesus is full of mercy. He's full of grace. When he judges, he never ever condemns me to death. He already condemned himself to death. He took on that punishment himself. And he says to me, great grace, great mercy. Come on, try again. Come on, you're doing better than you think you are. Go for it again. That's Jesus. And so I, I want to leave the judging to Jesus because he's so much better at it. And, and I want to live in harmony with, with, with humanity, with, with people, because that's more how, how I'm set up to be. I, I, I don't want to be consumed with everyone else's problems because it's easier to expose everyone else's problems than face your own. It's easier to find everyone else's faults than overcome your own. I want to focus on what I need to improve and me and God can make it happen. I want to get people around me that love me and they're for me and they're going to help me make it happen. And together, I think we can grow in wisdom, we can grow in stature, we can grow in strength, and we can grow in grace. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, does this help you today? You feel set free? So I'm going to close right now and, and, and I, just, I just, you know, you might be asking, all right, so from now... From now on, so, so what should I do? I, I would say, do this, you know, just simply accept your limitations, it's freeing. Say, I don't know, a lot more, it's freeing. It's freeing. It sets you free and it sets them free. They're not bound to you any longer. Hey, I don't know, but I'm for you. Speak life. Exit the judge's seat. Hand the gavel back over to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need for you to help me through life. And, and if they're going to be judged, Jesus, you be the one to judge them. And I pray that you rescue them, Lord. I pray that you bring wisdom to them. Let God lead and, 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 and get his wisdom in, in your help. And, and can I just say this? Follow Jesus and get to know him. If you want to know every single aspect of somebody's life, let it be Jesus. That's my goal. Of all the people that I'm going to follow, and all the people that I'm going to get to know, and all the people that I'm going to have an opinion on, and all the people I'm going to have a relationship with, Jesus is first and foremost above all. He's the one that I want to know. Look, Paul says this. He said, when I was with you, I resolved to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what I want. I resolved to know nothing else. I don't need to know about all your stuff. I need to know about the Savior, and let's pray that he saves us from our stuff. Set yourself free. 
set yourself free today by trusting God and letting his opinion matter more than your opinion. Can you say amen? Amen.